Baby, you don't know what you do to me Between me and you, I feel a chemistry I won't let no one come and take your place Cause the love you give, you can't be replaced Welcome back to my channel If you are new here, hi, welcome For those who are returning, hey fam, how's it going? So, you guys had requested and I did ask if anyone's interested in seeing what I eat in a day or just healthy snacks that I like to eat in order to help maintain my weight, especially because I am on a fitness journey and I've just been working out very consistently and I'm trying to really maintain the way I look right now. So I am doing that video today. I'm going to talk about um my macro nutrients like that breakdown i'm going to talk about some of the high protein snacks that i like to eat and then i'm going to talk about just like meals and eating out like because eating out and drinking is definitely a topic that i feel like doesn't get talked about a lot much when it comes to like trying to stay in shape and be healthy because there's a lot where that is concerned. So I am going to get right into the video by starting to talk about macronutrients. So macronutrients are basically our proteins, carbs, and fat. So macronutrients are really important because these are the main way we get like our energy from. Like those are like the large food groups that we're getting our energy from. So the good thing about macronutrients is most food items come with a food label that tells you the breakdown for the amount of proteins, carbs, and fat that is in that food item. It's a good idea, especially if, honestly, it's a good idea regardless of what your fitness goal is, if it's to lose weight, to gain weight, to stay the same weight. It is a good idea to kind of have an somewhat of an idea of how much macronutrients you're taking in each day so for me personally my trainer calculated for me I'm lucky in that sense how much my macronutrients should be for each of those groups because I'm trying to currently maintain the weight that I'm at I'm not trying to lose weight I'm not trying to gain weight so for me, the amount of proteins I should be taking in per day is about 103 grams of protein, 170 grams of carbs, and, and no, and 55 grams of fat. There's definitely no way I would be having over 100 grams of fat. That's actually a crazy amount. Like, you don't want to be having over 100 grams of fat like, so you're like a super super like bodybuilder and you're burning so much calories that you're able to consume that much in fat but yeah so it's 103 for protein 170 for carbs and then 55 grams for fat and if you pay attention to those numbers you notice that um Carbs is the largest. Carbs t is tend to be the largest thing that you're probably going to consume because most things have carbs and carbs is where we get a lot of our energy from. So carbs is important. Fat is my lowest because um, the caloric amount per one gram of fat, I believe is nine if my bio brain still works it's like one gram of fat equals nine calories versus for protein and carbs i believe it's for one gram of protein and carbs only equates to about four calories or five calories is one of those numbers i'm pretty sure someone drop in the comment and fact check me on that <laughs> but yeah so it's just like fat is more has more calories which is why you want to have less fat in terms of the grams because then now for the healthy snacks and things that I eat that are high in protein to help me um, 
gain more muscle mass instead of like fat. So some of the things that I eat, I eat like Greek yogurt because Greek yogurt is high in protein. Um, compared to traditional regular yogurt, they're not, they don't have as much protein as Greek yogurt. So that's the option I go with. I didn't always like Greek yogurt before being on a fitness journey. I probably would never eat Greek yogurt, but I've gotten accustomed to the taste and I now enjoy and really like Greek yogurt. I only like eat like three flavors though to be honest and from one brand like I'm so particular about this it's like a little snobby to be honest <laughs> about it but Greek yogurt you guys can figure out which brands you might like I have the one brand that I will eat which is the Danon light and fit the Greek yogurt that's the only one I eat and then I always get like the banana cream strawberry banana or strawberry those are legit the only three flavors of yogurt I eat um and then next uh getting protein powder obviously like that's really obvious like you can add this to your smoothies in order to help you have, get more protein in your diet so for me, I just easily add like a scoop or two, whatever the serving size is. Some protein powder is one scoop, some is like two scoops for the serving size. And I try to go for protein powders that have like about 25 to 30 grams of protein per serving. There's one that I really like from, that I get on Amazon that I will link in the description box. So if you guys want to check it out, feel free. Like it's really... It's really good I get the basic flavor of vanilla they have so many different flavors like chocolate fruity pebbles I believe is one of the flavors but they have a lot of different flavors so like you guys can definitely check them out and like see which ones you might like I'm like I said with my yogurt same thing with my protein powder I always just get vanilla for any brand of protein powder that I've tried because I don't have a sweet tooth so chocolate and like crazy flavors usually don't appeal to me because I don't like sweet things but moving on next I have like a lot of like seafood and this is also just because my dad is basically a pescatarian like he doesn't really eat chicken or any other meat he just really eats like seafood a lot so because my dad's a pescatarian, my mom obviously is going to cook food for my father and by result, the family eats a lot of seafood. It's not always, but we do have a lot of seafood. So like a lot of fish, shrimp, salmon, which those are all things that are really high in protein and just they don't have a lot of fat either to it. So like that's the good thing about seafood. But I will say for um, seafood, like shrimp, especially shrimp, tends to be high in cholesterol. So that's still something you want to be mindful about. Like, yes, you want to get protein intake, but like you still have to be mindful of other factors, especially like if you have an issue with high cholesterol, like that is something you definitely want to be aware of. Um, I also have tuna a lot, like the canned tuna I'll buy and I'll just make like tuna salad and have that with crackers or like a bagel or like a tuna melt sandwich type thing or tuna salad just tuna salad where I'm putting like cranberries a little bit of mayo um spinach and like salt and pepper and just like eating it straight like that but like tuna in different forms in different ways I also do eat because once again seafood high in protein um, another thing that I found out, uh, maybe about like a year ago, just randomly, I saw this in Target, like the brand Quest, they have a lot of like high protein snacks, but they have these protein chips that I swear they're so good. Like I, I love those things. They're pricey though, because for a pack with four it's like $8 and that price might be more because I haven't gotten them in a while 
and with inflation and everything that's going on prices are increasing it's probably more than the eight dollars but they're really good and i do like them they have different flavors they have like barbecue nacho cheese um like ranch like they have a whole bunch of different flavors but the three that i listed those are the ones i have tried and i do like them a lot they taste just very similar to like the generic brand of those like flavor chips so I would recommend them and they're really high in protein because they tend to have between 17 to 20 grams of protein per bag of chips and if you look at a regular bag of chips those things will have like one two grams of protein like nothing it's usually all carbs and those chips are good so I would definitely recommend those um other things egg whites egg whites is straight protein i like to mix egg whites with regular eggs so like maybe one egg and then like one serving of egg whites because it cuts down on the fat and i also get my egg fixing because i like to eat eggs for breakfast like yeah i'm one of those people like i like to always have like eggs for breakfast in some variation or form um so that's one thing you can also put egg whites in your smoothies which is something my trainer put me on to at first i was like ew gross egg whites in my smoothie i'm like isn't that like salmonella type thing <laughs> like like it sounds unhealthy like you know it sounds like one of those things you see in the movies where they crack an egg and they just like drink it like gross but it actually is safe to do, one, and two, you do not taste it at all. Like, that's the thing about egg whites. I feel like egg whites have no flavor. Even if I were to, like, fry it or scramble it, I have to put so much thing like cheese and, like, salt and pepper and, like, different things to give it some flavor because by itself, it doesn't taste like anything to me. So, in my smoothies, that's the good thing about it. It doesn't really taste like anything. Whatever you, else you have in your smoothie is what you're really going to be tasting. So it's definitely another way that you can add more protein into your smoothie as well with the protein powder. Um, and now for snacks and other things I do like to just eat that's not necessarily high in protein, but I just like to eat them. Um, popcorn is definitely one of my go-to snacks because it's tasty it comes in a lot of different flavors again i'm all for things that can be in different flavors especially if i like them so popcorn is one of those things i like to eat popcorn typically is just low calories as well so i can eat a lot of it and not be and not feel guilty about eating popcorn also popcorn became a really big thing because i tried to go gluten free a couple years back and i still try to eat things that is gluten free even though i'm no longer like strictly gluten free diet anymore so popcorn is one of those things um another thing is sweet potato chips because they're a little bit healthier like they're not made the same way as regular potato chips or if you just get regular potato chips but the baked version is also pretty good once again something that's gluten free and also just tasty for me i like to get um outshine pops or fruit bars i should say those are really good like when i have like a sweet fix in or i want something sweet like ice cream instead i will go for like one of my fruit bars because it's a healthier alternative it doesn't really have any fat like at all i believe and it's just straight carbs and it's not a lot of carbs so i like to go for my fruit bars when i do decide for something a little bit on the sweeter side i also like to get like the little snack breaks from sargento like so it has like some cheese some crackers or i can get the one that has like cheese almonds and like cranberries they have a whole bunch of different options but Typically, they come with cheese, and I like cheese a lot, so I do like to eat those as well in terms of, like, snacks. Another thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about things that are high in protein are chicken sausage. So, if you guys saw, I posted a short about, like, a high-protein breakfast option that I do. 
So in it, I was showing like I made some egg whites with my chicken sausage and some cheese. So chicken sausage are also pretty high in protein and they taste good as well. So I like to eat those. I'll eat them like in the way I did for that video, making a breakfast or I can have it with like some onions and peppers for more of like a lunch dish or dinner with like a side of like rice or like mashed potatoes or just like just any side that you probably would want with that and then like other than that like literally my meals i don't cook for myself my mom or my grandma typically cooks my meals like my full blown meals and for those those are typically just like like i said a lot of seafoods so a lot of like salmon fish and shrimp and that can be like with rice or rice and beans because I'm Jamaican and we have like rice and beans like at least two to three times a week or just regular white rice. Like rice is a very much a staple in my diet. I have a lot of rice on a daily basis. Typically two of my three meals for the day comes with rice. This just very much Caribbean in that sense. Um, so that's like a lot of my meals is like fish, salmon with some rice, or um, chicken, like curry chicken, jerk chicken, baked chicken, so with like rice or rice and beans. We also do like boiled provisions, so like boiled potatoes, boiled green bananas, or Jamaican dumpling, which is different from like Chinese dumpling, so it's just literally like dough so it's like flour that you roll into like a little circle and just boil it that's just how jamaicans make dumplings so i always have to clarify that when i say like dumpling because people tend to think of asian or chinese or but like just asian dumplings which that's not what it is i love me some dumplings so some asian dumplings yes so like that's usually what my meals outside of like my snacks and stuff looks like we also do like soups and so like chicken soup um red bean soup which is really good and nice and hearty because it's thick and yeah so if you're caribbean you kind of already have like an idea of like what the jamaican dishes are so a lot of things like that like some jerk pork some curry goat um what are some other things like my mom makes mm -hmm. but yeah like just like those i try my best to like limit eating like things that are fatty and to have like smaller portions of rice because rice is a lot of carbs and i do not want to have too much carbs especially when eating rice multiple times in a day so i try to limit the amount that i do eat and like I said, I don't make my food, so I can't be super picky in terms of what I eat because I'm just very thankful that I have a mother and grandmother who still makes my meals for me because I live at home and they don't force me to cook. So it works out. So I'm not like super picky about my food. I eat most things. I'm not a picky eater in general. So whatever my parents and my grandma puts in front of me, I'm going to eat it. I do. I am conscious that I am trying to maintain my weight so I will eat like smaller portions of the food if I believe it's like too fatty or would push me over my um, macro goals and just like my caloric goals for the day so like those are just things that I keep in mind when I am eating and like I said I'm going to talk about going out and alcohol so when I go out, like I try to like look at the restaurant or wherever it is I'm planning on going beforehand to see and have an idea of what's on their menu and just like to already have like healthier options in my head that I would want to pick based off their menu. Same thing with the eating at home. If I feel like something's is really fatty, even though I want it, I will have like a smaller portion if possible. Or don't eat it all in one sitting and like bring some home. Or split a meal with a friend or whoever I'm out with. And then for alcohol, alcohol is really, really um, high in calories. Depending on what kind of liquor and alcohol you're drinking, like 
cocktails like mixed drinks tend to be really high in calories especially if it's adding like a lot of like juice and sweetener type thing like a pina colada is going to be really high in calories i do not um like to drink really sweet drinks which works in my favor because I like to go for things that are more refreshing because they're going to tend to be lower in calories and not as bad. Also, these days, I'm not going out and getting drunk and bench drinking. I'll have like one or two drinks and call it a day. So the rare occasion that, you know, that I'm drinking more than one or two drinks do arise, but I just try to not have as much alcohol when I do go out for the reason that I do know it is very high in calories but if you are someone who do like to drink I would say go for more lighter liquor because it's going to be less calories overall so like white wines or white rum or vodka those are going to be less in calories than red wine and darker liquor like Henny and other things like that. I don't drink dark liquor, so I wouldn't really know what dark liquor <laughs> there is out there, to be honest. I don't like dark liquor. And also, on the tip of alcohol, lighter, light-colored alcohol would get you less of a hangover than darker alcohol and red wine. This is something I learned from a documentary that was on Netflix called All About Alcohol. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead. That's a plug for a show that I like. But it's a good show or a good documentary if you're really into drinking and just want to know how to prevent hangovers and stuff or if you're just curious about the effects of drinking on the body but that's how i learned that um one drinking has a lot of calories and that's why you you see people who drink a lot of beer they tend to have like the beer belly right because yeah so this video I feel like is already really long and to not keep you guys here much longer I'm going to end it here if you guys have any questions at all whatsoever feel free to leave them down below like I said this is just a quick overview of some of the things that I eat and stuff like for me like this is not what everyone is going to do like what works for me might not work for other people and like I said this is something that I'm still working on because I'm not always super great at hitting my macros in the day. Like sometimes I'm under, sometimes I'm a little bit over, but I just try my best to hit those macros and just to be conscious of eating more healthily. But like always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.